There's a look at San Antonio, thanks to Greg Payne working the drone. And it is a warm one in Texas, 95 at Zapata, 93 at Catula, and 90 degrees at Alice Eagle Pass in Laredo. And part of that is due to the sheer amount of solar heating with a lot of dry air entering the mix. You can see the dew points here are very dry, 20s and even single digits around Midland, 82 over 4 at Midland, which gives us a relative humidity of 4%. Dry air has very low specific heat, which means it readily warms up. And that's exactly what's happening this afternoon. And we've had a return to winter in some parts of the country. Widespread cold air advection coming in from Canada. The main front located out in the Atlantic. And behind it, a series of waves. This one here, very well developed. West of Chicago, bringing some rain showers. Yep, it's not really cold enough for snow anymore but they are getting the inclement weather. And further north, Minnesota is getting snow. Snow showers being reported this afternoon. So let's head to that surface map and see what's going on. The main polar front out there in Nova Scotia, cold front dropping down to the Bahamas in Cuba. Back behind it, progressively cold air as you move to the northwest. There's that snow 34 degrees this afternoon at Minneapolis and 33 in northern Wisconsin. Both of those stations there reporting snow. And as you go into Canada, yep, there's the return to cold air. Let me see if I can pan that up a little bit. Yep, there's the zero line in northern Saskatchewan. And as you go even further north, it just gets colder and colder. Minus 20s, and I guess the coldest that I'm seeing is minus 26 there in the Northwest Territories. Out west, it is quite warm. Looking at almost 80 degrees there in the San Joaquin Valley. And as we go further out into the Pacific, let me get that panned over there. Another system lurking off the Oregon coast. Not much going on with that at the Sour. And up in Alaska, still continued cold. They've got a prevailing northerly flow, which has been in place for probably two weeks now. I think last week they did have some overrunning as some of these systems, the atmospheric rivers were impacting the southeastern Alaskan coast. And as we go further to the east, there's that polar high that's shades of December and January. Very cold weather there. And moving back out into the Atlantic... A strong system impacting southeastern Greenland once again. Remember two weeks ago we talked about that dew line station somewhere in here that got pretty much hurricane force winds with snow way back in the 70s and 80s. I'll have to find that link, but this is a very inclement location in Greenland. They get the bulk of really bad systems, and that's the reason that area there is not very well colonized. Most of the Greenland Settlements are located right there and down the coast. And returning back south, some freezing precip in the Prince Edward Islands out towards Quebec City. And this is interesting. Kind of a blizzard there on the coast of Nunavut. Hudson Bay there, minus 9, minus 11 with winds gusting to 42 knots. And in previous years, these early spring systems have managed to shut down some of these towns here for days on end. And that could be very well what's happening with them because they are very dependent on air connections, commercial flights going down to the south. Let's see how we're looking with record temperatures. This is this afternoon. These are the official Weather Service forecast highs, 96 at Imperial, 94 at Phoenix. They're not quite up to that right now. They're at 87, but there's still a few hours left in the day. And lots of 80s all the way up into the San Joaquin Valley. There's how things are looking tomorrow. There's an absence of record low temperatures. 
You would think with that cold air spilling southward that we would see records broken, but that's not the case at all. It's actually ushering in seasonable weather. And this here, that's the real anomaly. Much warmer conditions than normal 80 at Salt Lake City for Saturday and 86 at Kingman. More of the same for Sunday, a very slight eastward drift into the central Rockies, coming up to 80 degrees at Colorado Springs. For Monday, for the start of the work week, hot in West Texas, 90 degrees at Lubbock. Meanwhile, we are starting to see some record lows, 21 degrees in western Massachusetts. Then for Tuesday, some moderation of the heat, maybe some drift into the Mississippi River Valley and continued cold in the northeastern U.S. And it looks like near 20 degrees at New York City. And before we look at prospects for severe weather next week, let's take a quick look at the upper air patterns. Progressive, fairly zonal, kind of broken up into a series of waves there. Let's see how things look through the weekend into next week. Run that forward. See a slight amplification of the patterns. A trough coming onshore for Sunday into Monday. A strong 140 knot jet across Arizona. That's it right there. That's going to be Tuesday morning. So we're going to see cyclogenesis in New Mexico, Colorado, West Texas. And that'll help bring the moisture northward. So probably by Tuesday or Wednesday, we're going to be seeing severe weather prospects returning once again. Going even further forward. Yep, things are moving along quite nicely into the southeastern U.S., maybe some risk in the Ohio River Valley later in the week. And just continuing that progressive zonal flow. So the patterns over the next one to two weeks probably will remain about the same through the entire period. So this time of year, we're very focused on the possibility of severe weather. I like to use the 925 millibar dew point that's up at about 2,500 feet MSL. I did get a question in the YouTube comments about the 850 millibar dew point. Yeah, you can definitely use that. That's a little bit more useful when the return moisture is very well established or you're dealing with an event on the high plains where you have a higher terrain elevation. But we're not looking at that right now, so 925 works for right now. Now you can use the surface dew point. That's gonna be right there. That works fine, but the problem is it's biased towards surface conditions. So that means if you have very shallow return flow, this will tend to overdo it. So 925 is probably about the sweet spot. So we start out with the Gulf Dry. There's the offshore component right there, helping to maintain that dryness. But eventually we do see the moisture starting to feed up into eastern Mexico right there. And so keep an eye on that as we go into Saturday and Sunday. You can already see the winds picking up to 30 knots. That's that low-level jet trying to get established, and some of the moisture does start to make it into the Rio Grande Valley for Sunday. And it starts flooding in for Monday. Let me show you a quick skew T in the middle of that. That's it right there. You can see we start out with 59 degree dew points at the surface, but just aloft, about 1,000 feet, it drops off to 52 and then down to 50. So this is kind of a marginal return of moisture. And you can see it's very well capped. So no severe weather potential, at least no widespread potential for Monday. And going into Tuesday, we continue bulking up that moisture. Now let's sample it around Austin and San Antonio. Now we're up to the 60s right there. So that's much better. But the capping is quite stout. Let's check out the capping further north in Oklahoma. Yep, a lot of capping. You're going to need some upper level lift to help remove that. So I'm not really sure what we're looking at for Tuesday. Still got 12 hours left in that day to erode the cap. And I can see some strong westerly flow in Texas indicating the arrival of upper air dynamics. 
Moisture continues surging north. The cyan indicates 60 degree dew points at 925. So that's going to be some beefy moisture, especially as you go south towards Houston. There it is. Mid 60s dew points up to 4,000. So that's going to be co located with a surge in stratus and stratocumulus coming northward. And that'll bring us into probably a classic dry line setup. Then going into Wednesday and Thursday, things move eastward as the Pacific and Canadian fronts arrive. Probably widespread severe weather in Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, maybe even Tennessee. And then we're back into that cold air advection pattern that we have right now. So it's kind of like we're on a six-day cycle right now. And there is the moisture coming back into Texas once again. And this looks like a tail end setup right there. The moisture flowing north, the cold air advection coming into the panhandles, and maybe a little dry line kind of like that. So maybe some se severe weather potential sort of in that region. And that's going to be on Friday next week. And man, yeah, that cold air is really surging southward. So that could tend to cut down a little bit on the duration and the spectrum of severe weather potential. And we clear things out for next weekend, uh, at least the first weekend in April. And then we're back to the same old thing. There's the moisture coming back north once again. No Big Rig Steve update for today because he apparently is on break. He's out in California and there's no weather going on there. But in Illinois, Iowa and Wisconsin, cold air advection, showery weather and blustery winds. Let's take a look at that surface map. Look at that. Tons of wind. We got gusts up to near 50 knots at uh, Moline, Quad Cities, gusting the 52 knots out of the west-northwest. And, of course, as you go into Minnesota, we pick up that snow. Now, we often think of skew tees as something you only use during severe weather, but this can show us a lot of information what's happening in this blustery cold air advection regime. There's the sounding for, I think that was western Illinois. Hodograph stretched out towards the east with that west wind pushing the vectors way out in the, to that part of the diagram. And look at that lapse rate. That is dry adiabatic from the surface on up. So that's going to favor churning of the air mass. That's how we get the gusts coming down from the mid-levels down to the surface. That very strong lapse rate helping to facilitate that. And we've also got the tropopause quite low. It looks like it's at maybe... 26,000 feet or so. This appears to be the stratosphere right there. And what's happening is that cold air is flowing out over the relatively warm terrain, modifying, and that helps to steepen that lapse rate. Cold over warm is an unstable setup. So no wonder we have this kind of weather going on right now. And one other area of interest is Ukraine. You can see that there is no aviation weather METARs being reported from that country. Still getting it out of Belarus and Russia. They have not totally abdicated their ICAO obligations. But let's check out the synoptic data. And indeed, we are seeing synoptic WMO data coming out of Ukraine. Nothing in the war-torn Donbass area, eastern part of the country, and of course where they have heavy, heavy fighting going on, nothing out of there. But what I'm seeing here is there's been a great warm-up. Temperatures have come up from below freezing, upper 20s and lower 30s, and now we're well up into the 40s. So that means we are looking at mud issues. We're going to get that spring thaw. World War II historians probably know the story of Nazi Germany getting entrenched in that mud with their mechanized forces. And probably the same thing is going to happen again here as we get the thawing and the additional spring rains. But so far it looks dry at this time. 
And we can see the temperature trends over the coming week. Looks like some 50s, widespread 50s in Ukraine for tomorrow. Then another burst of cold air bringing those temperatures down for a couple days. A warm-up by Monday, back up into the 50s once again. And looks like some 60s. Yep, definite 60s in southern Ukraine by midweek. So that represents a substantial change in the weather patterns. And I was curious about precip. Let's see how that's looking. A little bit of rain coming down. That's going to be maybe tenth of an inch, quarter inch or so over the weekend with that front coming down. Then a period of dry weather until midweek. And looks like now we're starting to see those rains get going in Ukraine late next week. Look at that. Starting to open up the Atlantic. Storm tracks heading that way. And they're going to see that return of the mud in the coming weeks. And for those who want to know more, there it is. Rasputitsa on Wikipedia. A big article about that. Combination of the... High water tables, the clay, keeping the soil from draining, and the arrival of spring precipitation. Anyway, that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you all for joining, and we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters, and Wednesday and Friday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.